Nights at the Round Table, a roundtable discussion on speculative fiction books and film. Hi everybody, and welcome to the next episode of Nights at the Round Table. Today we are discussing the urban fantasy book uh, Disappearing Nightly by Laura Resnick. I'm sitting at the table with Eric and with Marjolaine, and I'd like to start with general impressions of the book, Eric. All right. Um, the first time I read it, I thought it was the most brilliant urban fantasy I had ever read. Oh, dear. It was one of the first I had read, because I hadn't read many, and it was the first one written, and I'm sorry for saying this, but it was the first one written by a woman. So it was the first one that had actual characters that made sense when it came to women. Uh, and I hadn't realized until re-listening to it now how much it has influenced my own writing in some ways. Excellent. Marsha? Well, it was my first time reading it. I I liked it. It was, it was nice. It was, um, I really liked it tone, the humorous tone of the book. I like the voice of the uh, narrator slash protagonist. And uh, it had a lot packed in every chapter, was my general impression. Yeah, A lot of stuff happening. Yeah. So I also really enjoyed this book, but I do have two really major issues with it. Um, but when first reading the book, like, even like three quarters of the way through, I'm like, this is just, this is this is adorable. I don't know how else... Without... without. I'm not trying to be condescending here because um, it's not really condescension where I'm thinking, oh, this is adorable. It's not one of those, oh, this is cute. It genuinely is super cute. <laughs> yeah. It's cute. Yeah. I don't know how else to explain it. It won't shift your worldview. It won't blow your mind, but it's cute and it's fun. And I read it in three hours, so... Bonus on the readability. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I listened to the audio book this time. Well, no, the audio drama this time. And the company that does it is absolutely fantastic. It's full cast. Uh, they composed theme music for it. Uh, oh, cool beans. Every character was different. It was slightly tweaked, so they removed a few of the he said, she saids. And the voice cast was amazing. Um, it really brought out the banter. That, that was one I thing. I think I'm going to borrow that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have the first two in the audiobook. I'll okay. get the others when they go on sale. <laughs> yeah. um, one thing that struck me the first time, and that struck me this this time, I have issues with too many characters. Oh, when I have when I write and I have four or more characters in a scene and they're talking about something, I have the hardest time keeping everything fresh and not having just two people talking all the time. Mm -hmm. she, the author Laura Resnick had maybe four or five scenes in this where they did the, the round table and I never got confused while reading it obviously not while listening to it because the characters are totally different voices mm -hmm. but I never had I was never confused and the banter was always really fun even though they're talking about people dying and they got sad every once in a while it, it always like there's a great almost theatrical beat to it yeah yeah I uh it is a fun book and the I love the snark in this book. Yeah. It's very funny. <laughs> there are a lot of really wonderful, funny uh, moments in the banter. Uh, my favourite one being uh, that Atuna from like the yeah. city, like this really quiet town that was apparently the bastion of evil. That one? Really? And that went on for like, uh, for the end of one page and then over into the other with two different people going, wait, that a two <laughs> and it was just it cracked me up it's really funny the humor in this is mm -hmm. excellent there are a lot of times where i was just he, 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 in bed i'm glad i was in bed and not on the bus somewhere cause... yeah it was a definitely giggle inducing i had to stop myself at work while listening to it not to go <laughs> <laughs> because reading it is really funny but the delivery of the actors is extra just, Good, just a yeah. little bit Further. Good voices, good voice actors can make anything shine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what was it that dragged it down for you? 
that because you said you didn't finish, right? Yeah, no, I didn't. Well, part of it was that I just wasn't in the right mindset. Oh, okay. I've got this other fandom that's taking over my life slowly but surely right now. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I, I have no idea what that's like. <laughs> Not at all. I appreciate your understanding. <laughs> <laughs> but another thing, what seriously, when I mentioned how action packed each chapter was, mm -hmm. I guess it's not. It's not a bad thing if it's the sort of thing you enjoy, but mm. I like a little bit of a slower pace. Like there was a, I was trying to keep up with everything that was happening, yeah. and like, and at one point I realized, wait, I'm on page fifty, only. Mm. And like, oh, I didn't even check what page I was on until I hit like ninety six. Mm. But the the pace is breakneck. Yeah, the yeah. only time it slows down in the least is when. Uh, Lo the protective Lopez and hers flirt a little. Mm -hmm. Then it slows a little bit. A little. A little? They flirt a lot. They, they flirt, flirt a lot. lot. But the slowdown is there. That's yeah. the only rest period. And even that is a little bit stressful. I found that... Okay, so that flirtatious exchange throughout the whole book was absolutely one of the cutest things ever. Also super unrealistic. The whole time I was yeah. reading, I was divided. I'm like, this would never happen. And also, hee, this is adorable. <laughs> I Just like wait this. till he gets possessed by a fire god. Oh, excellent. Poor Lopez. <laughs> Lopez goes through a lot of shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> leave the man alone to do his job. Oh, oh, oh absolutely like not. She follows him at every case or he follows her. The entire series is their relationship is like this. Oh, they do really? get closer and then further apart and then closer. But he is the skeptic the entire time. Uh, the good. only thing that ever annoys me completely is the amount of times he says, "You should stay away from Max." Yeah, and I'm like, "No, leave the nice old like Max round huggable wizard alone." See again, Max adorable oh. <laughs> he's so cute max is the most adorable wizard i have ever read and it's a nice there's a lot about this that after reading more urban fantasy i really enjoy the main character isn't the super powered badass no she's just a regular the wizards in it aren't all crazy powerful super mysterious like, they're not Dumbledore meets Gandalf meets Conan the Barbarian, mm -hmm. which is something that is kind of common in urban fantasy right now. Oh, I'll take your word for it. I don't read a lot of them. Well, a lot of people are imitating Jim Butcher's Dresden, oh, yeah, but Dresden they, they miss the whole part where Dresden is a big-hearted softy and actually... Well, that yeah. Dresden files need to go in there, by the way. Yeah, they do. They do. Anyway, so she... I, I like that those two aspects. There are cuddly wizards. There, there's. She's not afraid of being silly. Oh uh, yeah. Which should I mean the next book is called Doppelgangster. <laughs> so obviously not afraid of being silly. I like the silliness in this book. It yeah. For really lovely, refreshing sort of change. It's a it's a nice palette cleanser between yeah. like heavier Ericsson's. Books. Yeah, yeah. So if you read like Stephen Erickson's Malice and Book of the Fallen series and you just cannot handle the 10,000 people that died in that one stroke of sorcery and you're just like, I need something like that, this would be the book to pick up. Yeah. I also, I like the, the Lopez, her storyline, not so much for the realism or the romance, oh. but the banter. Oh yeah, the banter's the awesome. flirt, flirt, flirt. Wait a sec, he's trying to get information from me. Yeah. No, flirt, 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 blush, run away. Yeah. It's, just, it's so cute. It's cute. Yeah. There's no other word for it. It's adorable. Mm. <laughs> I don't often say that about books. I rarely ever say that about romantic storylines. They usually make me roll my eyes and just go, ah, oh, for God's sake. It's got a quality that I can't, I can't. Yeah, explain yeah, there I are can't... certain romances that have this quality um i love pride and prejudice oh, has that oh, yeah um some of the orally osborne books have the same banter which i say across from the author because i be mean <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the it's an intelligent a battle of wits but that isn't mean yeah 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 yeah, it's both both people in there are witty, and you don't really feel like anyone is taking advantage of anyone else. And it, it mean it makes you feel like they are attracted to their to brains, their minds, yeah, either. not just their physicalness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good thing. 
Um, oh God! I, I was gonna inappropriate say... comments about her butt. Well, yeah. I also, I was going to say I love how this was written from the female gaze. Mm -hmm. Um, but it doesn't. It doesn't totally neglect the idea of physical attraction. Like oh, a lot no, of mention not. is made of uh, Lopez's blue eyes, and there was one mention, like when he leant against the table and put his hands down. She's like, "Oh, he's got beautiful hands," and I'm like, "Yeah, hands are a thing for mm -hmm. people." Absolutely, uh, it's it, one of the body parts it, I find most it's attractive. It's refreshing not yeah. to have only three body parts mentioned. Right, and also I liked that. <clears throat> He liked her in tight clothing, even though she made special mention to note that she's not laying off the Ben and Jerry's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, that's another thing that she's not... I mean, obviously she's attractive, because all characters almost need to be in this kind of setting. Yeah. And she's also quite but, petite, because she can fit into those... Yeah. She mentions she's short. She's short, yeah. She's in little. comparison to the other actress, um, the pop star. Golly G. <laughs> Such a great game. Golly, yeah, I read it and I'm like, uh, what the hell kind of book am I jumping into? Golly gee, really? Yeah. I'm, um, but I, I like that they don't make her out to be a paragon of beauty. Or to feign being, oh, I'm plain and ugly, which is a, an, er, a young adult thing, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. I'm plain and ugly. No one will love me. But every character who meets her falls madly in love. Yeah, yeah that's such a... <laughs> looking at you writers such an annoying <laughs> trope it really is <laughs> it is I understand why it exists but people can be ridiculously attractive with flaws you don't well, need usually more so because of yeah. flaws if they didn't have flaws they would be plastic that, you know. yeah well a lot of char female characters are plastic well, like, again why to be fair a lot of male characters are plastic <laughs> too <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Written as G.I. Joe knockoffs. True. Yeah. Yeah. Which is something this book I found avoided. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of characters. For such a short book, there are a lot of characters to keep. Like you were saying, you had a hard time. And I can yeah. understand why. Yeah. There's a lot of them to keep in mind. But they're different enough that if you have the, the following, or if you're used to something like Erickson, you can follow no problem. Yeah. Um, I liked how, without fleshing the characters out so mm -hmm. very, very much, um, spending ages on their backstory, which you don't really need for this, mm -hmm. um, they still had their own individual voices. And it was pretty clear in text who was who. Mm -hmm. I like that. Sorry. Gary Houdini. <laughs> Gary Goudini. Goudini. Yeah, Goudini. Yeah, Goudini. Goudini. Uh, so mm. The cheese? I don't know. Goudai. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. This this book put me in a silly mood. It's the That's book's so fault. <laughs> yep. I also like that you cared for the characters, even the the idiot ones or the ones that were kind of mean. You you did care for, except for the the uh, producer. I did not oh, care for her. Oh, what was her name? All. I want to say Matilda, Matilia, something like I that. Think it begins with a, yeah. It begins with an M. And yeah. the wife of the magician. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. The mean person. Yeah, the horrific harpy. The real um, the antagonist. Real, yeah, the real <laughs> villain of this piece. So, how far into the book did you get? Uh, a little bit further than my... I think I finished chapter three, but uh, not much more than that. I'm sorry. Like, did you don't be afraid okay. to spoil. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. I think we already have. Well, no, there's going to be chapter, worse coming. Chapter one ends with... Gully G disappearing. So yeah. you got to the I, point where I, they're talking to uh, the uh, Max and uh, Esther went talking to uh, the cowboy. Okay, so oh, you Dick. saw Max use magic. Yes. Okay, I thought that was a cool reaction. A lot of times people see in books see someone use magic and, and they're, they're like, just, oh, cool. Yeah, and then she's like, her she's whole like, world just turns yeah. upside down. And she gets nauseous. I liked that. Yeah, and honestly, that would probably be what happens to me and i also like that unlike a lot of other novels it's not a chapter worth of her angsting it, she just sort of follows and yeah, she just stumbles along and yeah. just just like in complete shock um i also like how the author brought attention to one of the things that might have been a plot point had she not brought attention to it is that everybody else just accepts it they're like oh yeah magic okay they've actually disappeared they've gone to a different dimension cool and in the uh, in the protagonist's think musing about it, she's like, how is it that everybody else can just accept it and I'm 
I'm still struggling with this concept. Like, am I the weird one? Are they weird? What's going on? And by drawing attention to it, immediately my my skepticism was pushed to the back of my it's head. It's lampshading. Yeah. Proper lampshading. Not just, haha, we wanted to use a trope. <laughs> yeah. more of a haha I really don't want to make every one of these 12 characters go through this <laughs> I don't have time for this they're stage performers that do magic let's just assume they believe in magic Yeah, <laughs> which is not fully far I've known some people who do stage magic and they range from for like granola the universe will provide magic believers to hard skeptics yeah well houdini was a hard skeptic yes he was, he was one of the greatest yes, magicians ever that's what the tv show told me <laughs> sorry there was a tv show called houdini and wells or something like that houdini and doyle doyle, doyle. Based on yeah. the real thing yeah. they actually yeah because sir arthur conan doyle was very much an yeah. occultist he yes. really believed in that stuff but in the, in the tv show it's a procedural where they solve cases Oh, that's together. cool! Oh, I need to watch that TV show. Yeah, it was cancelled after oh, like half mother- a season. Of course it was. Was it on Fox? No. <laughs> Still salty about Firefly. <laughs> I don't know where it was. I think it was like, wasn't it a British, Canadian, American combo? Off topic. Know. Back to yeah. this. Um, um, sorry. So there were a, a couple of things about this book that bothered you. Really bothered me. One. Spoiler warning. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler warning. I don't it, care. For the end of the book. So, yeah. yeah, big spoiler. Right at the end of the book. So, one, the big reveal that it's the handicapped person who was the villain the whole time. I'm so fucking oh, sick of that on. trope. But I am glad that the handicapped villain wasn't the villain because they wanted to cure their handicap. That at least assuaged me a little bit. The whole reason the why he was. Oh, assistant. With the lisp. Hieronymus. Oh, yeah. And he the, was the villain. So the whole, whole reason... Uh, He wanted to... The whole reason why he was evil was, one, his mother mother was was cursed cursed by a a djinn. Two, he wanted to rule Manhattan. He wasn't really worried about curing his... No, he didn't care about it. Unless he was working around it. Which, okay, made it... Yeah, made it a little better for me, but still... Why? Really? Done with that. Also, you... uh, Anyone... Rape uh, being justified. Uh, no, they don't. Yeah, yeah. The oh, come on. Yeah, yeah. The the demon being summoned needs a virgin oh, sacrifice, sacrifice, and the villain is having a lot of trouble finding a virgin, which is actually kind of funny about the whole <laughs> that, New that York is thing. really funny. And then and in the end, the circumstances end up that the villain, who is a virgin, because he's been on. Is the one who gets raped. Yeah. By his own summoning. Yeah. Um, Which I think is supposed to be a... It's a, a just desserts. Yeah, ha-ha, just desserts. Ha ha. No, no. It, it's... That, I would have preferred if he had been eaten. Yeah. It sat really ill with me. Yeah. I didn't like it at it, all. It was uncomfortable. It was... Yeah. I just... I found the whole thing <laughs> at risk of prodding the internet. It was triggering. Like, somebody saying, that creep got exactly what they deserved. Mm-hmm. Like, mm, no. Nobody deserves that. No. I was, I'm was. i not having it. I was super unhappy about it. And it's a shame, because the rest of the book is really, really good. Um, and it also irked me how flippantly the idea of rape was treated. And it's just... Mm, didn't like it. I would still say the book is worth the reading, though. In despite that. defense, I'm fairly certain the author has mentioned that that was a plot point she is embarrassed about. Yeah, Because she, she wrote the book in 91, yeah. and then she continued the series in 2005. So the, the time between she yeah, grew you, yeah, and learned. Yeah, you learn better. So the rest of the series is a little bit less awkward. Okay. Well, okay. good. Um, I, I will things, pick up but... book two. Like, this wasn't an absolute deal breaker for me, but during the reading... It, it, it did turn my stomach. It wasn't a that book that you read that you absolutely hated. It's like first season of this show. What? There's a book you hated, and this is that basically rape was the main. Plot oh, point. It fucking wasn't... Stephen R. Donaldson's The Chronicles of uh, the Thomas Chronicles, of Thomas yeah. the Covenant, something like that. It wasn't that mm. bad, but it was still sort of a. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Well, I don't know. Just because I enjoyed the rest of the book so much and I was having so much fun with it and then this happened and I was just... Yeah. No. No. 
just no. <laughs> yeah, it feels like a plot point that a young author made. Yeah, and shouldn't have, and would would be caught today. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, if you have a an editor who's not a dick, maybe they would say something along the lines of, mm, "Maybe avoid this." Yeah, it. I was not thrilled with that at all. That said, I will probably end up reading the rest of the series. Especially now that you've said that the rest weren't nearly as... There's a few cultural out. things, but again, I, I'm not being part of those cultures. I can't... Yeah, like the thing with the like, drag queens, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, There's a lot of penis jokes about the drag queens, but I don't know if that's offensive because I'm not a drag queen. Yeah. Or anywhere near that community. Yeah. But there's like Italian I... mobsters in the next one. And oh, okay. After that, there, there's at one point some voodoo stuff that goes uh, on. But it, it's hmm. treated as the religion and not as the Hollywood... Uh, no, as the Hollywood black magic witch. Yeah. That, yeah. Oh, okay. And then there's stuff like that. that yeah. There so... are some notes that uh, uh, Ms. Resnick did hit that were really good. Like using the correct pronouns for the drag queens when they were in drag as opposed mm. to not. I appreciated them calling that she and her when they were she and her. Yeah. yeah. So, I liked that. <laughs> <laughs> And there was very little judgment about the mm. the relationships between drag queen and well, there was uh, sexy Samson and <laughs> Delilah. Yeah, it was Delilah. And they were obviously a couple. Oh yeah. Like both on and off stage. Yeah. And but there was no judgment about no a drag queen and a a, a drag very sexy assistant. man on stage. Yeah, painted gold with a gold leaf bikini. The descriptions of all of the costumes were absolutely hilarious. Yes, very funny. I've never seen so many tassels. Oh, I'll give you the name of my my tailor. <laughs> it's a cowboy m magician. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I like the whole. Uh, I like Duke's relationship with his daughter. Yeah, it was very sweet. Yeah, when it could have been very controlling, it, it was very more just very was... protective yeah. without getting creepy. Without getting creepy. Even about when it. she falls in love with. Um, Barclay. Yes, the uh, the Wall Street. The Wall Street guy. Yeah. Who, who is actually kind of sad and like cute in the same way that all the other characters are. It's easy to be like, oh, rich Wall Street guy's not happy. Oof. But I can kind of see where he just wants magic. He wants yeah. to do magic. He wants to perform magic. But... And he's never a dick about it. He's never like, I'm rich. I'm better than everyone else. Yeah. Which is refreshing. <laughs> yeah. Nice Actually, he said, I him. hate Wall Street, and she said, everyone hates. Everyone hates Wall Street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, like, it's stuff like that, you're just like, <laughs> it, Yeah, a good snark, a good combination of uh, film noir dialogue, almost, yeah. without the femme fatale feel. Yeah, yeah. I really, yeah. It's it's a fun Ow. read. Except for, the, except for the things I mentioned. Yeah. I'm not happy about those. Yeah, I was pretty shocked when I got back to it because I had forgotten. Oh, yeah? Because it's not... It's rarely the conclusion that I care about. Oh, really? No. Oh. Because, yay, okay, I knew who the villain was, but I how they got rid of him, honestly, don't care. It's the journey, the yeah. people in between, the funny lines, the descriptions. And the fact that it all turns out pretty okay in the end. Yeah, the flirting. All of that stuff combined is what mattered to me, mm -hmm. not... The ending, so I was kind of shocked to reread it and go, "Ooh, oh, geez!" Because yeah. I mean, since I've read this, oh God, has it been thirteen years? I don't All right. know, has it? Yeah, it came out in two thousand five, and then I yes, got it's it on been reprint. Thirteen years. Because yes. I really liked uh, the short stories I read from her father, who was a sci-fi writer. Oh, okay. Mike Resnick. Sure. Yeah. And um, so I picked up the book, and back then I had no care. Oh, rape. Oh, that's kind of uncomfortable, but eh. But now, after everything and be learning more, I was like, "Oh dear!" Actually, to the point where one of my coworkers was like, "Are you okay?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah, sorry, just stubbed my toe." <laughs> <laughs> my coworkers don't watch this, right? <laughs> so, because you're still in early days for the book, was there any character in particular that jumped out as being especially good or pretty obnoxious or? Um, 
nobody jumped up at especially as if as especially obnoxious. What are words? <laughs> uh, yeah, way to make it difficult. <laughs> Diction uh, is done with the tip of the tongue and the teeth. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, like I said, I like Esther. I like the protagonist. I mm. like her voice and her snark and all that is pretty good. And uh, so far, I continue the book just to stay in her head and continue to see things from her point of view. Yeah. yeah. She's one that... Yeah, it's the kind of book, especially the first person urban fantasy, that if the protagonist isn't likable, it's not fun to read. Oh. You want someone who is both intelligent and fun and who you can understand. Yeah, they're allowed to be flawed, but not to the point of being a rapist. Yeah. Donaldson. <laughs> so it was first person? No, I don't think Thomas oh. the Covenant was first person. <laughs> oh, that yeah, no, that would be really awkward. I mean, rape is bad enough, but having to see it from the rapist's point of view, that just... Ugh. I don't even want to think about that. Thank you. Sour taste in my mouth. Thanks. I hope it's not the banana coffee. No, the banana coffee is delicious. Generously donated by generic coffee. <laughs> no, seriously, though. Buy some. It's really good. <laughs> All right. Um, final thoughts? And star rating. Uh, you can skip the star rating bit. I will. Because you haven't read the whole thing. I'll give the first three chapters yeah. um, a half f star from what I've read. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts on it thus far in conclusion? Uh, thus far in conclusion, I'm a little bit concerned by the spoilers that I've learned, but at least now they won't, if I continue the book and I think I will, they won't catch me so much by surprise yeah, I, mean, I can brace myself that's why I, mean, I don't mind being spoiled especially for that kind of stuff I want to know what's coming and yeah. in a little bit of a defense it's not prolonged and it's not drawn out and it's not described it's, yeah no it happens more or less off screen okay so it, it's still ugh. yeah it's, but it's it, not like oh god I have to go through this yeah okay it's it's <laughs> It's dealt with in the same light, flippant manner that the rest of the things. Yeah, unfortunate. <laughs> Which makes it both better and worse, and worse in different yeah, yeah. ways. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I know to brace myself for those last couple of chapters, I guess, and I'll just carry on. Yeah, I think it's like the last on the last few pages. Yeah, it's on the last few before pages. Before last chapter. Yeah. But. Okay. No, you go. Um. <sighs> I'm, I, I have to forgive the ending, mostly because, obviously, I forgot about it. And it is awkward, but I really enjoyed the rest of it. The rest of the book's pace, feel, humor. So I'm going to give it a four. Yeah, that's fair. Three for me. Um, It's a fun, light read. I really enjoyed it. Uh, It was over in three hours. <laughs> yeah, it's a really it's quick a short, read. Yeah, it's a quick read. It doesn't read. feel like it should be, though. Well, oh, yeah. 400 pages, yeah. but... Yeah. I, and it was fun right up into the last little bit when my stomach turned a little bit. Um, but I will be picking up the rest in the series. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to, I, I don't know how to like balance it out. It's really shitty that rape was used as a tool. Um, it's okay to enjoy some problematic things yeah. as long as you admit that it's not that it's problematic. Yeah, yeah. and it was quite problematic for me. Um, quite triggering. So. There is that. So three stars. Uh, the rest of the book was fun and light, um, but it's not going to change your worldview any. It's not going to explode your imagination as to what the cosmos could be. <laughs> <laughs> However, it is a good introduction to oh, it's a great decent introduction to urban decent fantasy. urban fantasy. Yeah, because it really walks you through it. And if you're not used to, oh my god, there's magic. Why doesn't everybody know about it? Yeah. Then yeah. yeah. Hmm. Also. You know, I date Lopez. I mean, it's the second best introduction I could think of. A study in ether is definitely the first. Oh, oh yes! yes. <laughs> oh, I, I am just plugging everything today. I am sorry. No, but buy the book, though. Mm. <laughs> okay. Uh, that one. The Goblin Emperor. Emperor? Oh, the Goblin Catherine Emperor! Catherine Edison. I have been wanting to read this book for friggin' ever! Now Yay! you must. Okay, so the next book that we're going to be reviewing is The Goblin Emperor by Catherine... I can't even read my own writing. Yeah, Catherine Addison. 
Addison? Ed- Addison. Or Edison? Addison with an A. Addison, okay. Or at least that's how I've written it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, might be wrong. All angry comments can go to the bottom. Of- <laughs> <laughs> I will read them. I probably won't care. Uh, if you have any thoughts about Disappearing Nightly by Laura Resnick, leave them down in the comments below. I do lurk, so I will probably reply, unless you're being a dick. And yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks very much, guys. Bye! If you are Catherine Edison, and she has spelled it wrong, she will apologize, even if you are being a dick, in the comments. <laughs>